Let's see if you understand all the algebra needed to solve this equation. So this looks pretty simple, but actually there's a lot of moving parts to this equation, but it's not overly complex. Let's take a look at it. We have the square root of x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section and feel free to use a calculator as well. And I'm going to fully explain exactly what's going on in this equation. There's a few different really important algebra concepts that you need to understand, but we'll get to that in just one second. But first, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So to understand how to solve this equation, let's kind of take a look at a simpler form of the equation. So we have the square root of x squared. Let's just kind of temporarily think of this as the variable x. So if we had x minus 1 is equal to 0, how would we solve this equation? Well, hopefully you will know that what we have to do is add 1 to both sides of the equation. So x would be equal to 1. So what we want to do here is isolate the x on one side of the equation and move all our numbers to the other side. And we can do this by adding or subtracting whatever we want to both sides of the equation. So this is an example of a simple linear equation. Now, if you understand this, we're going to basically do the same thing. But what we want to do is isolate this part of the equation, square root of x squared. Okay, so that is our goal. We first need to isolate the square root of x squared. So we're basically going to do the same steps. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And then, of course, we'll talk about the rest of what's going on here. So we're going to first add 1 to both sides of the equation. And this is going to leave us with the square root of x squared is equal to 1. All right, so at this point in the equation, what do we have? Well, we have an equation that involves a square root. And this symbol in mathematics is called a square root, but it's also called a radical. So for those of you that are studying algebra, what you're going to be studying is radical equations. Okay, now of course, uh, you could be studying square root equations as well, but that will be under a bigger or broader topic of radical equations. So this right here is a radical equation. Now, if we kind of got rid of this radical for a second, we have x squared is equal to 1. Okay, now what type of equation is this? Well, we would call this type of equation in algebra a quadratic equation. So we kind of have a quadratic equation inside of a radical equation, and we're going to have to kind of keep both concepts in mind. So let's take a look at a simple example here to help us understand how to solve a radical equation. So let's just kind of get rid of this quadratic part. And let's suppose we had just the square root of x is equal to 1. So how do we solve radical equations? Well, basically, you want to get rid of the radical. Now, let's just kind of stick with square roots just to make this nice and easy. So how do we get rid of a square root? Well, to get rid of a square root, what you can do is square it. All right, so if I wanted to get rid of this square root, I can square that square root, and all I'm left with is what is inside of the square root. In this case, it's an x. But if I square this side of the equation, I also have to square this side of the equation as well. So if I had the square root of x is equal to 1 to solve that equation, what I have to do is square both sides of the equation. So 1 squared, of course, is 1. Now my answer here is x is equal to 1. And there's a big kind of twist when solving radical or square root equations. You need to go back and check your answers because you can end up with something called an extraneous solution. So if x is equal to 1, I can plug in that 1 into my original equation. So that was the square root of x is equal to 1 and see if this is true. So let's replace this x with our potential solution 1. So is the square root of 1 equal to 1? Yes, that is true. Now this is going to bring me to a very, very, very critically important point. Okay. So I need you to pay attention because so many algebra students 
get confused right here. So I need you to really directing your attention right here. So I have the square root of one. Let's just kind of go down here and uh, use another example. What if I asked you, what is the answer to the square root of four, right? So what's the answer to the square root of four? Now, some of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, the answer is two, because two times two is four. And you would be right. But isn't the answer also negative two? Because negative two times a negative two is also a positive four. Well, that is a good question, all right? Now, when we have a problem just like this, the square root of four, when you are looking for the answer, what you're looking for is something called the principal square root. Okay, this is critical. The principal square root is only the positive version of this answer. So we're not looking at the negative root here. Now that's for a different situation. And if we had like an equation like x squared is equal to four, to solve this, we would take the square root of both sides. This is a quadratic equation. We would indeed have x is equal to both positive and negative two, okay? But we don't have that situation. So when you're taking the square root of a number by itself, you're just going to focus on the positive answer, okay? Now this is important because if you didn't know this, if you plugged in one right here and we went to go uh, take the square root of one and someone thought it would, uh, the answer was both positive and negative one, i.e. one times one is one and negative one times negative one is also a positive one, well, you can run into problems, right? Because what someone could think is saying, all right, well, the answer here, the square root of one is both positive and negative one. So one is equal to one, that's true. But if you think the answer is also negative one, well, negative one is not equal to one. So someone could think that our solution here, x is equal to one, would not be right, okay? This is a really, really important point when it comes to checking extraneous roots. You're only checking the principal square root. Okay, so with that in mind, we can go back and actually solve the original problem. So as I indicated, a lot of moving parts here that are really important for your understanding in algebra. So let's go back up here and work on uh, the original problem. The square root of x squared minus one is equal to zero. So let me go ahead and erase all of this and we'll go back to our original problem and apply all these concepts. Okay, so you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is a lot more than I bargained for in this video. Well, sometimes I just can't help myself when it comes to mathematics because I wanna make sure that you walk away with all the important things that you need about this particular concept, right? And I really try to focus in on uh, common mistakes and common misunderstandings. All right, so let's get back to the original equation. And the first thing that we wanna do is isolate this part of the equation. So what we're gonna do is add one to both sides of the equation. So now I have the square root of x squared is equal to one. All right, now what I wanna do is get to this x squared part, all right? So um, my goal here is to solve for x, but first I have to get x squared all by itself. So every anytime you are solving a radical equation, you need to isolate that radical, and then you want to kind of square both sides of the equation. Now, this is the case when you have a square root. So if you had a cube root situation, you would cube both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and take the square of both sides. So the square of the square root of anything is just what's inside of that square root. So this is x squared is equal to one squared, which is one. Now at this point, I have a quadratic equation. Now, what do we know about quadratic equations? Well, because this is a second degree polynomial, there is always two solutions, okay, whether uh, they are real or imaginary. So we will have two solutions to this quadratic equation. So how do we find them? Easy, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So here we have the square root of x squared, which is what? Well, that is x. And the square root of one is going to be both positive and negative one. So when we're solving a quadratic equation and taking the square root of a number, you will have both the positive and negative root, okay? Because these are our two solutions. So what does this mean? X is equal to positive and negative one. Well, our first solution is X is equal to a positive one. And our second solution is X is equal to a negative one. We have two solutions. Okay, so these are our potential answers. And now 
what we need to do is plug these into the original equation. X is equal to both positive and negative 1 and see if this works out. So let's go back up here and do that. Now remember, we need to keep that principal square root concept in mind because now we're checking these values into our equation, right? So we have to kind of switch uh, from taking the square root of both sides of a quadratic equation like this. We got our answer both positive and negative one. Now we're checking these values in this equation. So now we need to think about the principal square root. All right, so now let's go ahead and check positive one in this equation. So what we're gonna do is replace this X with a positive one. So when we are checking this, when you are replacing a variable with a value, always use parentheses. So we're gonna have the square root of one squared minus one is this equal to zero. Okay, so one squared is one. So now we have the square root of one minus one is this equal to zero. So remember, we're dealing with the principal square root. Okay, the square root of one is one. Okay, a positive one. So one minus one is in fact zero. This is true. So x is equal to one is a good solution. All right, so now we need to check negative one. So we're gonna plug in for x a negative one. So we'll just put a negative sign right there. So negative one squared is what? Well, that's negative one times negative one, which is a positive one. So we get back to this right here, and the square root of a positive one is one, so one minus one is zero. So both x is equal to one and x is equal to negative one are good solutions. Okay, so again, this problem had a lot of things going on, and one of the biggest uh, reasons uh, people get uh, radical equations wrong is this concept of extraneous roots and the principal square root. So if you're having a tough time with these type of equations in algebra, and this would be stuff you would learn uh, like the Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, and Pre-Calculus level, you can find links to all these courses in the description of this video. But the main idea is this. Anytime you're trying to learn algebra, you just don't want to simply practice a procedure if you really don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. In other words, if you're doing something mathematically and you don't realize or if you don't understand what's going on, okay, what does it mean if you're doing these steps? This is how you learn math. You got to understand the real meaning of these steps and then that way you'll be able to easily solve a variety of problems. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.